prior to the time that I became associated with the, the general construction company, the John T. Brady and Company. And then how that happen? And then we went to work for one week, just temporary, while deciding to go to Camden, New Jersey. We seemed to be a million miles away at the time. We didn't have a car. We weren't married. And then uh, he was in the office, and Mr. Jordan came over and said, What's the young, handsome bloke doing in the office? And he was, you know, doing some paperwork, and he says, you know anything about what he thinks? This is the accounting, this is what I'm studying about, his case now. And this is how he started with John T. Brady. He said, would you check out the books for us? And the man said, yes. He took the books home, he took them a week, and he took them back, and he said, what did you find? He said, you really don't want to know, do you? He says, yes, I do. He said, well, I can't use the word, said, but you're just stealing from each other than the company. He said, I'd like you to work for me. And this is how his career in John T. Brady started. That he worked while going to Pace at night, worked during the day, and worked himself up to being part owner and a vice president of the company. But that's how it actually started. And what year was that? 1931. And what year did you retire from John T. Brady? We retired in 1972. Many so. years. So I actually was uh, working for them for around 43 years, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yes, there was a, a time during the Depression when uh, uh, I didn't uh, six months work for about six months because the company wasn't able to get any contracts. There was no contracts available. There was no work being generated anywhere. We borrowed on Very, very, very difficult. Uh, there was no income. No income. Barred on insurance. Uh, and borrowed. Hopped our rings, my rings. Well, we did and have... And I had telephones, some telephone skills that I saved. We did have some uh, uh, savings set aside, which we used. We didn't have any bills. So that helped us because... We no paid debt. cash. No uh, debts. There was no, no credit. We had no credit. No. We, we, paid, we paid for everything that we owned. That's a policy. That's a, that's a different, a little different today. We I believe, survived it. It was fun. I believe, no you will, I believe you will find that today uh, many of the young people uh, depend upon credit. Well, that's the that's way it. of life today. Well, that's, um, this yeah. is the way it's it is. Way I mean, I'm just today. explaining. They, they know this. Everything. Uh, there's one story I've heard that I'd like to ask right now, and that's got to do with how many years and the misfortune to run over again. Oh, no. Did you hear that? You, re you really, really want to hear that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, this was Aunt Vega. You remember Aunt Vega. I had a girlfriend coming down Roxbury Drive to Central Avenue in Yonkers, and it was a rainy night, and she runs over a big black cat. She really didn't see it. And she was so frightened. A lot of people there, you know, people get very upset at hurting animals. And she stops her car, and she picks the cat up, and she, it was really dead, and she puts it in the trunk of her car. If it were alive, she would have gone to a vet, she said. She gets down to the shopping center, and she doesn't know what to do with the cat. She wanted to put it in the garbage pail because it really was good. And, and it, it seemed that everybody was looking at her. So what did she do? She had a shopping bag and she put the cat in newspapers into the shopping bag and went into Alexander's shopping. So she goes near a counter and she puts the bag down for a moment while she's shopping. And within a, another moment, the bag was gone. Some lady, some woman stole the bag. And about, about five minutes later, from the ladies' room, which was just about 20 feet away, they hear these terrible screams. <laughs> this woman thought she had a good haul, and she uh -huh. goes to the lading ro ladies' room to open up her bag, and out came this messy, messy dead cat. <laughs> and this is a true story. <laughs> this is a true story. <laughs> Funny? That's yeah. a good one. Right. That was Aunt Vilia's friend. It really happened to her. <laughs> She figured everybody was watching her wherever she wanted to put it, and she didn't know what to do. But knowing in Alexander, you put a bag down, two minutes is gone. And the way that took was a bag lady. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to say the type of a lady, but you might show this to different people, and so I didn't say. <laughs> Does this conclude our... Well, there's, 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 there's,
Well, we have to, we want to get on the road to Florida. We still have about an hour and a half of, you know, getting together in the apartment. No, that's why we want to get over the turnpike uh, by at least five or six o'clock. At this time, it's 2.45. Mm. Okay. Wind it up. And okay, well, we here's have one more story, yes. please. There okay. is another story that involved a cat. It had something to do with uh, someone giving you a signal that Oh my gosh. You're going back into the dog ages to my mother. Give me some background on this. Okay, story. alrighty. Well, this is, uh, I remember this. I was about uh, seven or eight years old. My grandmother had died when I was six. But prior to that, she, she was a very religious woman, and she and my mother used to discuss the hereafter. And my mother would say to her, Well, you give me some kind of a signal when you die, because she knew she was dying, she was ill. She said, uh, okay, she said, I will come to you on Good Friday at midnight and I will play the piano for you. I get all goosey thinking about it. So I think Grandma was dead about two years. And one fr uh, Good Friday, you know, as usual, the punnettone, the baking, getting ready for Easter. And we were in the dining room sitting around the table waiting for Mama to be finished baking. And the clock was striking 12 and the piano, the scale on the piano, up and down. Well, my mother's hair stood up, truthfully. And we were all, all remembered, you know, what Grandma said she was going to do. But luckily, at that moment, Uncle Emil came in and another neighbor. And my mother couldn't talk to them, and she said, Grandma's playing the piano. They go inside, and the cat was playing, you know, going up and down, walking on the piano keys. But it was ironic that it was Good Friday and midnight. So we always felt that Grandma came to say everything was all right. It wasn't such a good Friday. It was good. It was Frightful. Good. No, no, I don't think, well, a momentary fright, but when you consider that it might be Grandma, it was wonderful. It was not frightening. Right. It's a likely story, but... But true. It's it's That's good true. it's good for your the material you yeah. uh, we'll interview. sell that one to the National Enquirer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want to know. <laughs> they want to know. Well this it was very, very nice of you they visiting this Christmas. It's nice meeting this camera group. Right. Uh, crew. Go to Mary and all the wonderful Chanel children having us here for Christmas. Thank you. Very, very beautiful Christmas. Oh. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. I, I wanna thank you very much for we enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you. you very much. It's been beautiful. Ciao. And best wishes for the Thank you much. <laughs>